Welcome to the Corporate Learning Network videocast. I'm Jeff Cattell. Today I have with me Gus Crisetto, Chief Learning Officer of the U.S. Government Accountability Office. This is sort of a recent move for you, so what have you been working on since you entered the role of CLO at the Government Accountability Office? Two main areas of concentration, uh, diversity and inclusion, in the training as part of a larger program in diversity and inclusion, and executive and leadership development. In parallel to that, professional development for the auditors and analysts that make up the uh, majority of the uh, employee types in uh, uh, at the Government Accountability Office, and uh, working on the development of competency models and running the learning programs in a way that they're uh, tightly coupled to talent management. Great, great. Um, and so one of the things that uh, is a big question nowadays is I know the use of technology and I'm sure that also has some impacts on a, a government office as well. So can you outline some of the technologies that you use at the Government Accountability Office and how that plays a role into your learning and development process? Sure, happy to. Well, I look at technology in three big areas uh, for development of learning, the delivery of learning, and also for the administration through learning management. So uh, our learning management system is uh, some total and a version called Pathlore that's been around for a number of years and is very popular in the federal government. Uh, it does the basics that we need for uh, managing registrations, reporting and so on. Um, we also uh, do distance learning using Adobe Connect. We have a contract with uh, Skillsoft, so we offer a variety of uh, online learning through that contract. Uh, we also do WebEx and virtual uh, uh, virtual teleconferencing mm -hmm. uh, using WebEx and Adobe Connect. Wow, that sounds, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of things at play here. So then the follow-up question always is, how do you avoid just using technology because it's available um, and just because of technology's sake? Right, I've been asked that question before and usually my answer is, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the way we do it is we align it very closely to the mission. So any time that we invest in technology, it goes through a rigorous process of analyzing uh, the return on investment and the return on expectation of what, what that technology is going to do for us, in the not, not only in the short term, but also in the long term. And uh, we, we make sure that it's fully aligned with the, with the mission, the learning programs that we are uh, deploying, and as a way of uh, checking that, you know, we continuously monitor the use of the technology to make sure that is in line with uh, our, our program goals and objectives. Okay. Um, another area that I know that gets a lot of discussion, and I'm not sure if this may differ in, in, in government, but, but the idea of showing your department's worth specifically for learning and development and showing the return on investment and for something that may not, you know, produce profits in the same way as other things in a company do, it might be something that's hard or different or foreign for these leaders. So what steps do you take to show ROI for learning and development? Well, uh, we constantly measure the uh, outputs of our programs in terms of uh, the achievement of uh, specific competencies. Uh, we have defined a performance management system with specific competencies for the various roles uh, or bands, employee bands, and we align all of our programs to those specific competencies. Uh, we also establish, although not in a, in a quantitative way, but we establish professional proficiencies that people need to meet. Uh, through the coupling of the learning system and the performance management system, we are able to tell whether people are behaving and performing in the way that is expected. That makes a lot of sense. So, looking towards the future for you, what do you see as the, the big challenges that are sort of leaning on the horizon right now, and what are you guys doing and steps that you're taking to address those challenges? Right. Well, the biggest challenge right now in the federal government at large is the um, the economic situation, uh, reduced budget, uh, reduced resources. So being more efficient, collaborating, uh, being able to leverage uh, technology in multiple ways, programs in multiple ways, is, is the way to go. Um, we are in, uh, currently in, um, in, a, in con working in conjunction with the uh, Chief Learning Officers Council which is a uh, cross-agency uh, cross council of about 20-some agencies, and we look at ways to collaborate, share information, share uh, programs, 
Um, also, in federal government, we have the Office of Personnel Management, who has a very extensive website for uh, sharing information and um, collaborating with, with the different agencies. Can you speak a little bit more about the, the council? That sounds like a really exciting initiative and something that really could be so innovative and bring some new ideas about. So with the council, what are some of the things that have, the ideas that have come out of that, of that group meeting? Well, primarily collaboration. Uh, how can we leverage the efforts that we put? Now, the, the federal government operates uh, in a somewhat, uh, each agency operates in a somewhat isolated way, uh, especially when it comes to, inve to, to investments in learning and, and technologies. So um, by sharing information, by uh, doing projects in, in conjunction with each other, uh, presenting uh, to the extent also to share contracts, uh, we've been able to leverage uh, a lot of the, the uh, federal uh, learning budgets. That makes a lot of sense. All right, well, before I let you go, I want to see, Gus, what are you most excited to see at this year's conference? Well, I'm really looking forward to meeting people, sharing ideas, um, recharging my batteries <laughs> by, through, through conversations. The, the one thing that um, sort of stuck out is um, I'm going to be next to a fireplace, is that... <laughs> a fireplace chat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're billing it as. One of those, like, um, like you know, from FDR, he would have those fireside chats, very, very government focused. But yeah, a nice kind of intimate way of discussing new ideas. Hopefully, we'll be able to move to the pool side. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. Well, thank you, Gus. That was thank Gus Crisetto, CLO at the Government Accountability Office. To learn more about Gus or any of the other speakers on this year's program, you can view an agenda by clicking the download, download Now button below. Thanks for watching.